when the mayor, his family was picked up with the Jews that, that he was hiding, the local electrician in the village uh, was made mayor uh, because he was a member of a Nazi party in Holland, and so he was a, he was one of one of them sort of you know. So they made him the mayor, and one of the first things he did was uh, summon my father at City Hall, the town hall, and told my father in no uncertain terms that the Jews that we are hiding in the house. They'll have to go. I want them out. I don't want no Jews in my area under my jurisdiction. So you get rid of them. So my father says, over my dead body, they're staying. And he says, over your dead body? He says, that can be arranged. And he, he's, he told my father to leave. Anyway, my father left. City Hall, and he went next door where the cop shop is, the police station, and he told the cop there what, what had just transpired up at City Hall. And he told my father to just be quiet, don't do nothing, don't say nothing, just go home and relax. He said, I will look after it. What we found out after the war was that he was uh, the head of also of the underground movement. And uh, that night, uh, an envelope and a little note was dropped through his mail slot at his house. And a little note says that the next bullet, if you do any harm to any of the Andringas, the next bullet will not come through the mail slot in an envelope. So from that time on, he kind of uh, became our protector. So, <laughs> so that's how he survived to the end. But even though after that, like the German soldier that walked in and said, who is that little girl? You know, uh, eventually your luck would run out, but the war didn't, uh, ended in the nick of time for us anyway. <laughs>